welcome to the second episode of The Art of Thought. I'm your host, Kwaku, and I'm joined with me today, these two guests. Rafiq and Omari, what's up? Yeah, these two people I went to school with. Um, this is the second episode, and it was recorded on July 18th, 2018. This topic, what is art? So for you two over there, um, what what do you guys think art is? Sure. So for me, art is like self. Like, and what I mean by that is like everything you do is technically in art, whether it's mixed martial arts, IT, programming, painting, drawing, music. It's like an expression of oneself. It's like what they say, what a sword is. It's like an extension of the arm. Mm -hmm. I would say art is an extension of the self. It's like self-expression, the way people perceive the world, the way people approach things. Um, It's like a unique blueprint, like our fingerprints kind of orientation, I feel. And what about you, Amari? Yeah, yeah, I agree with that, man. It's like it's an expression of our desires. It's like whatever we're feeling, we just we put it out there whether it be like painting or writing or like Rafiq said, mixed martial arts things people don't really think about as being art, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah. This is all art. Like Even our athletes, hmm. sports, mm-hmm. sports is art, yeah. in my opinion, you know? Because so. like you, you think you would know based on us going to school with this um, how they always like, your teachers are like, they don't want to hear that side of it where they're like, we don't want to hear that you think that a football player's, the way he does things is an art form in a way, you know, like dancers yeah. and stuff like that. They don't want to hear that yeah. for fine <laughs> arts, at least, you know, yeah. Uh, yeah. there's obviously different types of arts, performing arts, fine arts. Um, I guess sports in a way, the way you're saying it would be a performing art in a way. Yeah. 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 Really? Yeah. It's just an interesting, like, thing that's why i came with this topic today because i was like because think about basketball mm-hmm. you know like the dunk contest and stuff like that mm-hmm. all these moves yeah. and stuff people do and they have to do different things in order to keep our attention yeah and, you know to be impressed with it they even have judges there rating kind of like at an art show and stuff mm-hmm. exactly and then it's like when you think about like soccer or like football or something like that i mean it may look easy watching it but you put it on paper or actually start trying to kick the ball into the goal or dribble yeah. the ball past yeah. like soccer is defenders crazy. that are good at it. That's a whole different ball game. Yeah, that's true. Especially this World Cup that just passed by. Oh, yeah, yeah, that game. That game. Was- yeah. We're not, we're not going to spoil it though, because this is coming up this today. You know, so there probably some people probably haven't seen that final France versus Croatia game, but yeah. it's pretty dope. I think I didn't wake up early enough to see it while it was live because it was like eight in the morning and I had just come from the beach prior the oh, other sure. day. So I was like, no, nah, I'm good. But <laughs> yeah, but like for me, I guess art in a way. So I'm going to I'm going to break it down to like, I guess this is what we should do. We should we should break down this thing from performing and fine arts because um, that way okay. you know, it makes it easier to narrow it down. So the links clearly that I sent you guys are based on fine arts mostly they do kind of generalize and put it more put more fine arts emphasis but like artists literally um Mm. but there's performing arts and it's it's like a crazy dilemma um so in fine arts since that's the easiest one for most of us since that's all we learned about um that's what anyone learns about um fine arts literally to me is like so you guys heard of that ready ready made right like the um <clears throat> the duchamp ready made it sounds mm-hmm. familiar yeah it's like a if you look it up it's a toilet seat that he flipped it over and put it in a museum oh, called it art yeah 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 oh yeah <laughs> it's like what <laughs> but at the same that. time that's like industrial design and the mm-hmm. word design is related directly to me to art so in a way it is um you know we're not talking about copyright or anything like that in this because it's that's a whole another topic um but it's just 
it's still art it's some kind of design granted he probably he stole it technically because someone else made it but yeah. <laughs> it's still yeah. art you know <laughs> no, it is. yeah so i mean you make it your own i guess yeah and that's another thing like i don't know i read it somewhere um it says the art art it says from uh lumen lumen learning it's like a education website uh, art is highly diverse range of human activities engaged in creating visual auditory or performed artifacts artworks that express mm -hmm. the author's imaginative or technical skill are intended to be appreciated for their beauty or emotional power so that's kind of like that toilet seat that toilet you know yeah it's supposed to be shown yeah. for its beauty you know even though you know i don't know what his thought process was in flipping over a toilet seat toilet and just calling it yeah, Here's my I feel like he was probably just saying like anything can be art. Like <laughs> he probably, I mean, first it's probably like you know, kind of a joke or whatever. Mm -hmm. To damn, he probably was expressing it with his voice. He was like, "Yo, look, I'm gonna flip this toilet over, I'm gonna put it in, and I'm gonna say it's art, and I mm -hmm. bet you it's gonna make me money." <laughs> and it made him way too much and money. It made him too. money. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's yes, yeah, that's, that's crazy, right? So like. <laughs> Obviously, I graduated already. Rafiki you graduated, Omar. You haven't graduated yet, but you're almost done too. So this is almost like this is almost like a summary of what we've kind of learned in school and what we actually paid attention to. Because granted, I know I didn't pay attention to like seventy five percent of what I learned. So, oh, no. <laughs> yeah. so uh, hopefully none of our professors look at this and correct us. <laughs> this is uh, you don't need to do all the research for this. This is just what you think um yeah. but like you know art art you go outside you see a car for instance the design of a car the design of a car no no let's let's change that up you see like your little uh your phone okay your phone for instance is technically art because it was some human expressed oh, yeah. you know it was like man i really want something to look like something and i really want to yeah. show off the design of it oh yeah Engineers and when people feel it art. you know yeah, and when you feel it, and then art also Game invokes design. feelings, you know. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah, so you're not gonna get a like, potato phone, you know, unless you like no, potatoes. Man, like, <laughs> I'm looking at this MacBook right now. It's mm -hmm. just like, the craft and shit. Yeah, it's. I know. I mean, it's all like factories and stuff. It's, now, it's industrial design. But yeah. <clears throat> it's yeah. I know. It's a. It's like really. It's it's. I'm trying to figure out how to word it correctly cuz again we're not we're not doing a knowledge podcast like this is just uh, yeah. this is just your experiences that's all it is and like yeah. but what you it's like oh go ahead no, no. I was just going to say I was just uh I was going to say what he said about the uh, Max makes me think about the game devices that we're seeing now mm -hmm. yeah. are they going to are they going to be able to really make anything different than just a box yeah you know? I, I, I think we're think going about, digital with that now digital oh yeah, yeah. virtual world in the virtual piece. world ready player one digital mm -hmm. yeah download everything yeah. and experience it mm -hmm. directly instead of hold a I controller download yeah. it where though uh download it from the cloud that's it oh, that'd be interesting. going that way that's crazy you know i'm not gonna spoil what the next episodes of the podcast will be but if you're interested in any of those kind of things eventually with those that topic will get hit so yeah that'd be cool but um all right like i said yeah but we're <laughs> oh but what i was just saying is uh i feel like when it comes to emotion because uh some of these articles was talking about like the psychological effects and stuff like that so um when these engineers and stuff craft you know the macbook or you know, the iPhone or, you know, a droid phone or something like that, um, where you don't want it to be too loud, but at the same time, you don't want it to be too dual because, you know, we're in the new age of self-expression, yeah. people mm -hmm. dyeing yeah. their hair, wearing, you know, yeah, different true. forms of clothing and stuff like that. So, you know, when you look at a MacBook or an iPhone, it's like you get a sleek feel, you know, it's like, it's like, um... You know, I want you to chillax, you know, relax a mm -hmm. bit. 
when you yeah. pick up the MacBook or pick up the iPhone, you know, this is yours. Make it smooth. You know, you're cool. You relax. You know, suit and tie for no reason. Trouble season. Mm-hmm. Jay Z quote. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> that's no, that's like the way the MacBook right make you there. feel. And then, you know, you bring up uh, Microsoft computers and they more, uh, you know, they all right, but, you know, they more of a, a box like, you know, like a nine to five kind of feel kind of computer to me. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, you're just bringing it in just to work on, work on it, you know. Oh, also, you can play games on, you know. True. At least Alienware type computers and stuff like that. Yeah, and this computer here. So, you know, it's yeah. like they all kind of bring their own form of emotion mm-hmm. to the, or how they want, you know, the person that grabs it to feel. Mm-hmm. True. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I see, like... <laughs> Again, we as you know that we just finished school. I know you finished Rafiq like before I did, but we as people who just recently are about to finish or finish school, you only learn about like oh, what is the texture, form, space? I'm lo- I'm reading this thing, the same article that I talked about before: texture, form, yeah. space, color, value, line, and stuff like that. We only learn about that stuff, and uh, we don't learn about the emotional appeal that why you like a piece in a way you know they do ask us that but they're not like why do you like you have an i have an xbox controller in front of me right now and i'm like they don't ask you like oh why do you like that shape so much you know why don't you like uh a nintendo switch controller shape some more or something they don't ask us what connects you to that piece of art you know they, they they only want to know you know how does it feel how it's like don't use your emotions at all actually that's what it really is when the whole point kind of, of art is to emote. Exactly. Like I feel like in school they try to make it besides like uh, a Ralph Kirby or Elliot Jones, you know, I don't teach to try to make it feel like a robotic feel. Like mm-hmm. you know, how does the texture look? I mean that's nice and dandy, but I'm not gonna go up to the painting and touch the texture and yeah. feel how it feels because First off, I don't want to ruin nobody's work if it's still wet. And at the same time, you know, I'm only going to touch it if the person, you know, tells me to touch it. Mm-hmm. I mean, I can see the texture. I can see, you know, the line marks and line works. But when it comes to really how it makes me feel, I got to put my emotions in it. You know, I'm not a robot. I'm not going to sit here and calculate, oh, this is the size of the canvas. Right, right. This is the paint that was used to paint, the, paint mm-hmm. on the canvas. These are the... The step one to step ten on how um, the work um, should was laid out or something mm-hmm. like that. You know, it's like, you know, when we sitting in the class, you know, they're like, um, you know, they get mad if you don't participate. But at the same time, it's like, well, how am I supposed to pers- participate if you ain't letting me express mm-hmm. my true feelings about it? Yeah, I feel like that's the reason why a lot of people hold back. Like, what they're going to say about it, because they're like, they want to touch it. Like, I remember we went to, my friend and I, we went to downtown Norfolk, um, and we went to this museum, not museum, this guy had an opening um, at the World Trade Center, I think Andy Harris, um, local guy. And my friend, he wanted to, like, he wanted to touch it, because, like, Andy made, like, a thing that looked like a hamburger, or it was a hamburger, Mm -hmm. actually, because I later talked to him, and he was like... Mm -hmm. Uh, my friend, he was like, he really wanted to touch it and make sure to see if it was a hamburger or it was uh, a fake and it was like a paper mache hamburger because it looked realistic. And I was like, I really don't know. I'm pretty sure it is a hamburger that he probably coated in something so it never rot- rots or something or it's just a timely piece. And then later on, obviously, we ended up uh, meeting him in his actual studio um, like a couple of weeks, like a week later or so. And he was like, he was like, yeah, that was a real hamburger. Um, I just put it there. And voila, it was art. <laughs> and I was like, in my mind, I was like, this is the same as the ready-made. This man took an already made thing and just put it in there and said, here you go. And yet people were surrounding it. Like, it was amazing. But it was like a Wendy's yeah. hamburger or something. A Wendy's hamburger. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is weird. It was like, what? Why? You know? That's mm-hmm. so strange. You would think you had to make it, make it yourself. Like, you yourself. But it says someone else made it. I'm gonna call it a hamburger artist. <laughs> made it mm-hmm. himself. Mm-hmm. So it was it was weird, you know. And he wanted my friend just wanted to touch it. 
And I was like, no, you touch it, we're getting kicked out of this place, so don't touch it. <laughs> so <laughs> High key. I know. <laughs> it was crazy. Yeah. But, yeah, in terms of art, like, <clears throat> like, I'm going to actually, I'm going to read these key points. Um, you guys can see the links. It's on the Lumen Learning one. Um, I'm just going to read these key points that these people said briefly for people who um, don't know about these kind of things or like they're getting into the field of art criticism because that's pretty much what we learn in school is art criticism. That's why we learn all those technical stuff. Um, mm -hmm. The key points, it says, okay. um, the interplay between principles and elements of art provide a language with which to focus and analyze works of art. Um, the principles of art include movement, unity, harmony, variety, balance, contrast, proportion, and pattern. The elements of art include texture, form, space, shape, color, value, and line. And then it says how to best define the term art is a subject of constant contention, which is why we're doing this right now. Um, since the conceptual art and postmodern art theory came into prominence, it has been proven that anything can be termed art. Again, with the toilet seat, with toilet and the, and the hamburger that this man made, uh, took. And then key terms, I don't really care about the key terms, but formalism, it's the study of analyzing and comparing form and style, the way objects are made and their visual, their purely visual aspects. Don't really care about that more as like, I just care about those terms that they said. Because honestly, in class too, even though I went to school for those things, have terms I still don't remember what they mean. So. Um, <laughs> like you can look it up on Google easily, but that's not what this is for. This is just strictly like when you see a piece, when you see something outside, <clears throat> do you ever wonder why someone made it? When I see a piece outside? Yeah. And by piece, you know, as we're saying, art can be anything. Do yeah. you, do you wonder um, why someone made it? Sometimes. Yeah, I do. Um, yeah, why that? I kind of think about why did this come into their mind in the first place? Mm -hmm. um, and what does it symbolize to them? Because mm -hmm. um, I could have my theory, but it might not be exactly what they were thinking. Yeah. But I kind of like, too, the fact that I don't know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, Murphy, what do you think? What do you think? Um, you know, sometimes and I kind of agree with Amari. Um, you know, sometimes I do wonder why some things are made or, you know, what was uh, someone's thought process mm -hmm. or, you know, cause you know, sometimes people do art and there's like a story behind it. So, you know, you're like trying to figure out the story, which is very exciting, exciting. You know, it's kind of like, uh, that old cartoon blues clues, you know, you're trying to find out the clues mm -hmm. to yeah. every <laughs> uh, thing to the you know, whatever artwork it is, or even, you know, build, building structure or whatever it may be. And you're like guessing all these things. And then if you end up meeting the person that actually designed it or, you know, created it and they're like, well, your, your perspective, I enjoy it, but you're way off from what I'm saying. So, you know, that's the cool part of, you know, art, you know, you get, you bring, when you see someone else's work, you bring your own perception mm -hmm. and it gives them like some kind of feedback of, Oh, you know, I didn't see it like that, but here's actually how I was, well, here was, here's what was going through my mind just about, so, you know, it's like when it comes to, you know, trying to figure out what someone's work is or what it is meant to be, it's like a chess game or a chess match. And, you know, you know, neither right or wrong, it's just you usually just bring in your own perception, and usually your perception is either is different than you know the person that originally crafted the the Not artwork. Too, yeah. Let me see something. I'm trying to like I'm trying to pull up this thing. Um, since we're still in the topic of uh, what's it called uh, fine arts, I'm gonna pull up this thing. Um, the series. What the heck. Uh, I don't remember which one that is. Let me pull it up on this. It's a series that I, I was coming up with for a while, um, probably come up later on, but I was going to decipher different styles of art. Um, I was going deep into, I was going deep into fine and performing arts actually for that one. Uh, and 
I narrowed it down to photography. I narrowed it down to um, painting, film, writing, fashion, music, drawing, sculpture, dance. And then even now that you're saying it, yeah, sports also can be it. Mm-hmm. And so, like, so I, I put it all together. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. Cinematography, too. Yeah, I put film in there, too. Oh, yeah. yeah. Fashion. So, and yeah, yeah, music there. Yeah. So I put it in oh, there yeah. and I was like, okay, I wanted to interview people. You know, the first general topic was what is art, which is what we're doing now. And then narrowing it down into the mind of the artist, you know, why do they, why do we create things? So going in that, why, why do we, why do you guys create things? Anyone can start. Uh, for me personally, I create things for experimentation, mm-hmm. you know. Um, when I was in, I had this teacher named Allison, you know, mm-hmm. and I did this hey. project. <laughs> <laughs> I did this project um, with pen and ink. Mm-hmm. You know, it was like, I think it was like seven. They were like all like, rec- I mean, not rectangular, uh, square shape. Seven, it was basically like a story of my life that I made animaic. And put a little put a little Japanese twist to it, mm-hmm. and you know she was asking everybody at the about their artworks, um, what they would do differently, and everybody you know gave what they would do differently. But for me, I was just like, you know, nothing, because it was for me. I'm always thinking, well, you know, I did this, but you know, it's time to move forward. Now that I know what I can do, let's see if I can push it a bit further. You know, it's not why remain in the past when you can learn from it and get better mm-hmm. as that. And then, you know, I did the art show and made big works that everybody, you know, enjoyed, you know, reminiscing off the founding fathers, but, you know, did me and my boys or me and a few of my boys in it. But I do art for experimentation, like also for myself, but also to see, you know, what people get from it. Cause, uh, I remember a question was asked, uh, what was his name? I think his name was Peter in the class. And he was like, the first day of class, he asked us, um, what, do you, what do you want people to get from your art? And I said, who am I? And you know, the whole room got quiet, but <laughs> and I, <laughs> the whole room got quiet. But what I, what I told him was, you know, at the end of the day, you know, your art, really truly doesn't matter yeah um, mm-hmm. people true. don't have a feel like do you know what this symbol means do you know what that means how does this painting make you feel how does these lines make you feel how does this character how does this how do how the way i draw how the way i paint it how the way i printed it how does it make you feel because at the end of the day if you get no feeling from it then this right here is a failure yeah mm-hmm. yeah so really when i do my artwork it's an approach to say who am I? When you see my artwork, what do you get from it? Because at the end of the day, I can tell you everything that I felt, but it means nothing because at the end of the day, you're the one paying for it or you're the one looking at it. Mm-hmm. You know, I could make artworks and put it all up in my room, but if the world don't see it, then they must not mean nothing. They truly don't matter. They're like fossils mm-hmm. waiting to be grass after I die. Mm-hmm. You know, so yeah, for me, it's just you know, do it for the world. Do it, do it for yourself, then do it for the world. And yeah, I mean that pretty much sums it up right there. Do it because mm-hmm. we enjoy it, and also because you know we want other people to enjoy it. Yeah, that's true. That's, yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll say what I what the reason why I came into the field, but Omari, let's hear your 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 backstory in terms of like why'd you get into what you do? I know you do graphic design. Why'd you get into graphic oh, design yeah, of all because, things instead of anything yeah, else? No. Okay. So like in high school, I had this graphic design class, <clears throat> and it was a lot of fun. My teacher was great. His name was Mr. Thompson, mm-hmm. real cool guy. And uh, he would give us these assignments, and it just kind of let us do our thing with it. And uh, I took it for three years. I started my sophomore year, and then took it through to my senior year. Um, and I asked him, actually, to write me a letter of recommendation for ODE graphic design program mm-hmm. and he did it which is real cool mm-hmm. and um, yeah and then 
I just started, I decided I wanted that to be my concentration in college. And hmm. wrote it ever since. That's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. It's like, meanwhile, like my, my reasoning for getting into art or specifically photography is, is like way different from like most people's reasons. Mm-hmm. Um, Rafiq, you said what? What is what was the reason of saying you got into um, you know drawing design over any field that you could possibly get into? Uh, well, I'm a I'm a dude that likes the jack of all trades, so mm-hmm. I like I want to be great at everything. Yeah, you know, I feel like you know everybody wants to stick to one thing, but I feel like you can do multiple things. Like, let's say you're a graphic designer. Well, how can you create take that graphic design and make it into a painting? How can you Take that yeah. painting and make it into a drawing. You know, it's mm-hmm. like I got into drawing and design to self-express because I like to go into all fields. You know, see what I can do, see what I can learn, so that I can enhance each field that I'm working in, and then mm-hmm. see what I truly love in each different field and see which one brings in the most money. Maybe they all do. You know? Yeah. Yeah. In the end, <laughs> they they do make you a lot if you can, if you stick to it. No, so yeah. see, <laughs> they do make oh, you yeah. a lot. Well, he definitely brings up a good point. So, like, I chose like graphic design, but he knows like I do for, like I do photography on the side. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we all do all different yeah. things from like music and you know, paint. And so, I think it's important to be versatile. I think because of the way college is, you have to kind of pick that thing. And yeah, they just force that. you into something. Yeah. Yeah, but you can really be doing everything else too. Yeah. While you have when you have free time, like, which is why we're doing this yeah. right now. But like for me, it was it was weird because I didn't even get into art until really community college. I didn't do any art in high school um, except for like what they force you to do. Um, I did I did engineering and architecture in high school. <laughs> so yeah, I didn't do any art. I only did only art class I took was a technical drawing in high school. Yeah, I took technical drawing because it's part of my engineering program. But uh, yeah, architecture is architecture is. I would yeah, consider that. Because yeah. you're drawing. Um, yeah. Floor yeah, plans and so, yeah, all the yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. Definitely. But, like, in terms of the deep rooted things that we learned in college and stuff, like, people were like, uh, my, I remember my teachers would be like, what, uh, you, get, you need a blending pencil. And I'm like, what? What's a blending pencil? What? <laughs> That's true. I do. What yeah, that? I didn't know what that was. <laughs> and then they would ask yeah. me, like, oh, you need to get. Uh, stretched canvas or something and i was like what what is stretch canvas i don't know what that is everyone's like what you don't know what stretch canvas is i'm like i didn't learn art in school (laughs) yeah when allison Uh, told me i I was like oh now i know what it is because like yeah (laughs) i know canvas obviously but i what like i didn't know what stretch canvas canvas was like what is that (laughs) and it just so happens to be what we think it is you know i enjoyed that class it was interesting it was really interesting she's an interesting teacher um, definitely, and um, just yeah. just a heads up for anyone listening, and like you guys, you said what? <laughs> I'm just saying, hey, Allison, she is. Yeah, and she's young too, so she can understand it more, like the different views of it than um, like yeah. more older people, like our advisor and stuff. Um, but like yeah. for me, I'm just like, like I said, I did architecture and engineering for four years in high school, and got the certification yeah, thing she, and everything. Um. Is there a reason why you didn't want to continue with one of those? I hate math. I'm terrible at it. <laughs> so, there's, there's a lot of math in architecture. Oh, yes. If, oh, and, yeah. Yeah. It's stressful math, too. It's like one well, math you know, problem yeah, is like two it. pages. It's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, no, I'm there, good. Is there more in architecture or there's more in engineering? Engineering. It would seem like, yeah, I would think engineering. Has yeah, the most. engineering. They don't build, they don't necessarily design things in engineers. They, they more just execute the architect's design. Yeah. That's what they do. They're execution yeah, ex- executors. Exec- I don't know. But like I, I did that. Um, and then when I was finishing up high school, I was leaning more towards um, like technical drawings. That's what I realized I was good at. I remember making like we we had to design a we had to design like a, a coffee table set, you know, with um, the chairs and everything for like a coffee house. Yeah. In uh, mm-hmm. I think AutoCAD or Inventor. I think Inventor. Then oh, import it into AutoCAD. AutoCAD is- yeah, we had to do that. Uh, and so what I did was at the time, you know, all anyone I knew about was like, oh, the Apple headphones because I had like an iPod Shuffle at the time, and I saw the yeah. Apple earphones, oh, yeah. and I was like, okay, or ear cups, whatever they call them back then, and like, 
I was like, all right, let me take something like this, but then transform it into a chair. So of course I had to use like a little caliper, I think that's what it's called. I'm not sure what it's called. I'd use some tool to measure the size of the headphones dimensions and replicate it into Inventor. Then I had to blow up the size of it to like an average size someone some hum- a human could sit on comfortably. So mm. I basically if you if you have a, like those Apple headphones nearby, like you can take kind of look at them or look it up on Google. If you flip it over, yeah. it kind of looks like a chair already. Yeah, I see what you're talking about. Yeah. And so I modified that design and made it more chair like. And then the table, I made it, I made a table out of, um, the table, I designed it and I made it, I remember making it into the form of, I think the iPod Nano, that square one at the time, like the the square touchscreen one. I made an iPod Nano table or shuffle table, I'm not sure. Um, but I transformed that and made it look more table-like, but it was still taking the design of the iPod Nano at the time into that. And everyone's minds were blown because everyone else is just making a generic table like the one I'm sitting on. <laughs> and I'm over here making something completely different that's like way past. It, it looks like something Apple would make, you know, yeah. Uh, yeah. even though it is an iPod design. But it looks like something Apple would be like, hmm, like this. In their store. Yeah, it looks like it could be an Ikea, literally. But like I remember having to make that. And then when I was finishing up my senior year of high school, I was talking to my teacher who I still found out he works at the school still. Um, and he, I was asking him, I was like, what do you think I should do with, you know, based off of what I, what my, you know, my highs were in, in this program, Project Lead the Way. And he was like, I had, I didn't know what graphic design was at that time. Uh, and I was like, he was like, uh, you should look into like technical drawing or, or, you know, some kind of graphic design thing. And I was like, what's graphic design? You know, yeah. and I was I like, didn't know what I didn't know what it was at all. You know, well, I wasn't educated. The they were like, I was like, oh, oh, what's this? Yeah. <laughs> and I tried graphic design. I was like, and, and but the way teachers try to feed it to you, especially at um, ODU, for instance, I know I'm going to give the name out there, especially at ODU. Um, they make it make it. They put fear. They try to put fear in you so you don't do well. Yeah. They, they're like, there's so many people out there. You're not going to do well if you don't do this. So I'm like, you're supposed to motivate us so that we push further, yeah. not try to throw us down. <laughs> That's the job of a teacher is to motivate the student to be the next generation. That's what it is. He tried to demote us and try to, even though it was graphic design one. And he was like, yeah. he was like, um, he said, if you design something. Wait, you took a graphic design class? Yeah, I took graphic design one and two. Oh, wow. Yeah. But like, yeah, but he was like, he took the whole class the first day of class. And he was like, if you guys want, if if you guys need to ask me something about your design, think about this. If you think there's something wrong with your design and you're asking me about that, don't ask me about it. Just that means, you know, there's something wrong with your design. So you should fix it. And in my mind, I was like, excuse me, you, you want to tell me that sometimes I can, you know, if you're a designer, sometimes you're communicating with your, with your, what is it called? with the person hiring you, you know, you're communicating with them all the time on your design. So I'm taking you as a teacher, a professor, as say the person who's hiring me for the design. So I'm going to design the thing. All right. But then once I get to a point where I don't know what to add or what's wrong or something like that, but I feel like something's up, that's when I'm going to consult with you. And that's what I would do. But he didn't believe in that philosophy. Mm. He believed that you should get it hundred percent right. And then show it, show him, which is not how I even do photography, you know, <laughs> Oh, yeah, there's no such thing as 100% right. Exactly. <laughs> He's like, I've been working with the military and some other, all these other things. And I'm like, you're bragging on what you do. You know, why, yeah. why would I want to pursue this career? That yeah. one I know is competitive worldwide. Like, Amari, you're competing with people in China that they don't need much. Yeah, they don't have, cool. they don't get paid much. But yet the person, why, yeah, why would you try to demote me? Over. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's just crazy. You know, like, I mean, me. <laughs> it was crazy like i was like you guys you as a teacher are a terrible teacher uh, i don't even remember his name it's just you are a terrible teacher because you're already it's the first day first day of class you're just supposed to be doing the syllabus and you already try to degrade everyone in this class damn i'm like holy crap what's what's up with this guy you know you're, you're even an adjunct faculty what are you doing so that's when i was like all right i am going to take a different route you know 
and then so I decided to go the studio art route, but more focused on photography. Um, which studio art? You still like Rafik? You still dabble into all the mediums, and then you give it's yourself your choice to pick one when you're finished with the program. And obviously, yeah. what I'm into now, photography. So it was just mm-hmm. like, but I don't create art based off of like. I don't use um, I don't use art to wait. Is Omari muted? Oh yeah. Uh, I don't use art to um. I don't create art for normal reasons. I got into photography mainly because I like technology a lot. You know, I built my own computer that I'm using right now to record this. I have done a lot in technology. Tried IT, didn't like it either. Too much math. But uh, (laughs) um, I like technology. So I use technology to build things. I use AutoCAD to build that table. I use, I'm using technology to record this podcast right now that people are, you know, people can listen to. Um, I I use technology mm. to do everything. So, I have a question for you. Mm-hmm. What do you think about the people that think that you know technology is um, not a good thing? In terms of, like the future, or like the way it's advancing, and like what do you think about not being able to drive your own car and stuff like that? Honestly, you know what I mean. I like driving, and. I mean, by the time I'm old and I'm like we're super old, you may not want to drive the car anymore because it'd be like I'm afraid I crash or something like that. But right now, right now we don't. Have, there's nothing I really need to worry about because <laughs> it's still gonna take a long time at this rate. <laughs> no, I don't. I don't think so. I don't know. I've I been seeing all the problems with laws out there. <clears throat> oh yeah, laws and stuff maybe, but no one can agree. In terms of the technology, I don't know. Yeah, I think it's closer than you think. Oh, it's it's already in. It's just the laws haven't passed because they're scared that those cars are unreliable. They yeah, think humans are more reliable, but I'm like, not actually true. Well, I... <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know. It's like a, I don't know. I don't know. It's but yeah, have to see and find out. But I mean, I, they, think it's, I think it should still be a choice. It, it it should be a choice. It shouldn't be forced upon. I think eventually it will be forced upon. But yeah, it's it's probably it's gonna be a choice yeah. one. Uh, they're just going to be more strict on people getting their licenses in the future, probably. We'll see how does that work. How do you get a license? Because your car. No. Okay. So, all right. To buy the car, you need the license. Uh, not, no. You're not driving. You don't, need, you don't need the car to buy it. You need a person. You need another what? person. Now, even nowadays, you know, I know we're going off okay. topic, but, like, <laughs> even nowadays, if you – if you want to get your driver's license, you need someone else with their license to drive and ha- that has a car in order to move that car so you could drive the car for your license. You can't get your license without anyone else. All right. So how do all right? Think about the self-driving car thing. How does mm-hmm. it work with uh, police officers? Um, what do you mean? Oh, like it's police like, okay, police limits and stuff like that. Yeah, speed limits. Because you can't say, oh, uh, you know. Yeah, car, exactly. I don't know. It just. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know. I don't. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. They'd be like, "Oh, yeah, you're not even touching this car." Not be driving too. Like, um, I think what's gonna happen or, is no. cops' jobs will change. Their jobs won't be for pulling over people when everyone is self-driving, obviously, which is years and years and, and like a lot of years away. I feel, um, cops' jobs will change from pulling people over for speeding because every car will go the same speed to just what? doing the crimes how can every car go the same because you know when your cops pull over because you're going too fast compared to every other car but if every car is self-driving every car is already talking to each other and so every car is already going the same speed no car is going to be speeding because no one can put an input into the car that's if we don't have um that's if we don't have some like takeover mode you know that we can take over because then if a human takes over of course you're going to get someone that's like doing something different but if there's no takeover mode the cop's job will no longer be to pull over people for speeding since everyone will be going the same speed i think there'd have to be a takeover mode i don't know right now there should be but like in the future i don't know like if something goes wrong i want to be able to yeah Yeah, I, I, i mean i don't know but that's another topic. Let's, we gotta get back on topic. 
Uh, but I was just saying, like, with technology and art, you know, a lot of people are like, I know Allison, for instance. I'm giving her name out there, not her last name. But, like, I know Allison, for instance, <laughs> she does 3D printing, you know? Mm-hmm. And she, she does, her paintings are, like, three-dimensional. You've seen them. Everyone's probably yeah. seen them. Her yeah. paintings are crazy. And yeah they're, nice. yeah, they're not even just like, oh, I'm just going to paint something on a flat thing like everyone else does. No, she literally differentiates by 3D printing things. She she like covers real skulls and real carcasses of things with whatever material she uses in order to do things. You know, she does some crazy stuff. And so like that's the type of stuff that I want to do. I want to do stuff that yeah. pushes it. You know, I use photography as like. I don't like the reason why I don't have a Canon camera, for instance, because they charge like three grand for the features that are in my like twelve hundred dollar Sony camera, Mm -hmm. you know. And so that means I can use the cutting edge stuff such as like, oh, I can I can transfer the photo. I know they can all do that now, but I can transfer the photo from my uh, camera to my phone anywhere I am because it has a built in Wi-Fi or NFC. I can do that. But you have to pay more in other companies in order to do that. And so I'm like, all right, I'm not going to do that kind of – I'm not going to get their thing because you have to pay more to do it. I don't have money like that. And two, um, this thing is a smaller camera. It's mirrorless. You know, The future of photography, for instance, is already in dilemma of professional photography. Mm-hmm. And so yeah. like that's, that's the thing. You know, Art can be anything. Uh, art can truly be anything. Um. <laughs> But it's how you do it, how you execute yeah. it. Um, Agreed. Yeah. You had something to say? <laughs> I heard I heard something in the background. I don't know. Oh, it's so oh. executed. You know, execute it as like, you know, it's how you do it. True. So yeah. like because Andy Harris, he versus you way. creating. You said what? Like in your own unique way? Yeah. Whatever you That's use, true. whatever materials you use, because art, one of the, I think, forms or something is material. Whatever you mm-hmm. use, um, whatever it is, we, you happen to use computer uh, a lot of the time, most of the time. Most of us do. I happen to use no. camera most of the time, you know. Yeah. But some I people just use I painting. Wouldn't. I guess I wouldn't consider just like straight up copying to be it. You said straight up copying? Yeah, like just exactly the same. I don't know. know. Like if I heard a song and then I just made the exact same song. Exact same song. (laughs) So it was mine? Yeah. Just because no one else heard the other one? I mean, technically, yeah. If I'm no not one else, about, like, influence or sample, yeah. I'm talking about just it's the exact same thing. I mean, technically, I guess so. If if you created the design of a blender bottle, you've seen those blender bottles. Uh, if you created mm. the design of a blender bottle, and you made it, and someone else made it, say like I made it, uh, I showed it to my parents, you showed it to yours, and I had never shown it to your parents. My design. Technically, you are the original creator. Them, yeah, you know the toilet seat that ready-made thing uh, that do shot. I said almost said made that that ready-made that he had uh, put in a museum. Other people have seen that before already. That's why there's so much argument over it. He don't care obviously, but he you know, yeah. it's it was it's still art. Is supposed to, a lot of the time I see the definition of art saying it needs to be original. You know, mm-hmm. but that's yeah. not original, and the toilet seat is not original. Especially that one. Someone already made it. He just bought it. I think he found it on like the side of a house or something. I don't know. Yeah, it's it's crazy. So let me see. Right here, I'm also seeing. So I went into what is art, um, and then the mind of the artist. Why do we create? So let me know what you guys think about. I'm gonna read off some uh, little words, t- part types of art that um, Mm -hmm. these are performing and fine, obviously. I think I already read it out once, but I'll read it again. And tell me what you guys think on in like two sentences. All right, so you guys can just take turns. So I'm gonna start with painting. Um, It's relaxing. That's barely two sentences, that's two words or three. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, yeah, 
it's relaxing and um, helps you get into a zone mm -hmm. and just kind of flow. And, um, the strokes painting. Yeah, painting for me is like the meditative form that allows you, especially oil paint, meditative form that just allows you to free form shapes mm -hmm. through color. Okay. What about film? Like cinematography? Uh, you know what? Yeah, it's like, it can, in my opinion, it's one of the best art forms. Just because of like the emotions it can give people and how like a movie can affect you. Yeah. You know what I mean? You ever mm -hmm. walk into a movie and walk out completely different? Yeah, you're yeah. like, man, is this real? Awful. Those sci fi movies out there that you come out exactly. of Exactly. You're like, man, I wish that was real. Wow. And the way like you forget that it's a movie sometimes. Yeah, you get too you uh, immersed. In it. Yeah, you can get drawn in. Like when yeah. it's a good story. Mm -hmm. So yeah, in my opinion, this is one of the best up there with like video games. Okay, actually, I should have added that to it too. Um, kind of, uh, Rafiq, I kind of agree. Um, feel like film is the action of someone expressing themselves as if they were born as a different person. Ooh. Okay, that's deep. And that's what draws people yeah, in. That is. <laughs> that's good, though. Like, that's good. Yeah. That's what draws yeah, yeah, people deep. in. You know, it's like, this character reminds me of myself. This character reminds me of my friend. This character, would I do it like this? Would I do it like that? Mm -hmm. And you get so caught up in, would I do it like this? Do it like that? Or is this me? Is this not me? That you put yourself in. And then that's the part that grasps you in and you're like, oh, snap. I forgot it was a movie. And, you know, you're getting in, intertwined. The person's crying. you crying. The person getting heated, you getting heated. The person happy, you happy. You know, that's how you know if it's a great movie. Mm -hmm. You know. Yeah. Definitely. Okay. What about writing? Oh my gosh. <laughs> writing. <laughs> I feel like writing is one of the best forms of art. Right, you know, it's like these are just words from the soul. You know, you got music, poetry, singing. Like if someone's singing, your head or something on you is moving. Like what is your mouth, your head, your legs, your feet? Oh yeah. It's like words are probably one of the most powerful things that us humans can utilize. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, most definitely. Poetry, song lyrics. I agree with that. It's pretty. It's powerful. So, so one thing I'm noticing with you guys is, as soon as I said writing, you guys are immediately gravitating towards music. So. Um, yeah. What I'm going to do, because music is one of those topics that I was I was gonna say, so that you don't get mixed up. So I'm just gonna jump straight to music, and I'll come back to the other one that I was gonna say next. So what about music? Okay. It's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Could you elaborate? It's just great. You know, I don't know what I would do without it. Hmm. And Rafiq, music is like it's like sound waves for the soul or waves for the soul like the moon helps the tides in the water i say music <clears throat> helps the tides of one soul because it's like yes yep it's it's like a connection it's like everyone has it expresses people's connection to the universe mm -hmm. like you have you hear little sounds like beep or you know doom doom sh, do doom do doom sh. and it's like at that moment in time that's the way the waves are moving for you that's the way the frequency is moving for you some people would say when they feeling down they listening to some hardcore you know rap dude talking about you know killing or whatever he's doing mm -hmm. or you know some people they feeling up you know they listening to Chance the Rapper. You know, yeah. mm -hmm. some people are saying they feeling angry. They listen to Pusha T. You know, some people yeah. saying they want to groove. They listen in to Kid Cudi. Some people exactly. saying they want to feel unique. They listen in to Kanye West. <laughs> you know, it's just different jams, different vibes. Mm -hmm. and, you know, it's like you music is the dancing of one stride. You know, it's like it's endless, mm -hmm. and the human soul is endless. You know, and it mm -hmm. just—it's like two and two. It's like a parallel effect. Okay. Yeah. You know. 
And Amari, what do you, what do you, what do you think? Can you, can you hear? I think he muted himself or something. Rafiq, are you able to hear me? Well, yeah, yeah, I'm back. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, I okay. Can hear. okay. <laughs> so, Amari, what do you what do you think about music in terms of art? Man. Think deep in your soul. Try to not go surface level. <laughs> really, I just. Like I said before, music is just I like that. I don't know what I would do without it. Mm -hmm. um, I'm a, I'm the kind of person too. I listen to every time. Yes. And anything. Um, actually, yeah. I I just recently started listening to X X X Tentacion. Mm-hmm. I don't know that that sounds very it's like you died now and everything so uh, and now you're listening to it yeah yeah exactly but now I just wanted to check him out mm -hmm. yeah man that's, that's a bad, bad man <laughs> yeah I reckon man for anyone nice. hmm. who hasn't heard his album I recommend checking it out um and his other songs with mixtapes and stuff like that cause man I'm not gonna lie I kind of judge when he was alive but I kind of just took the headlines and was like, oh, all right, whatever. Try to figure out what's so important about this person that people are caring. I didn't so really try to do all that, yeah. Yeah. I watched it on an interview. Yeah. That's one thing that um, <laughs> that I've been doing lately is VH1 has like a um, behind the music you know, series mm -hmm. that they've had since like the 80s or something like that, or the 90s. And I've been watching like the artists that I listen to, um, they're – they're behind the music just so you can know what went in their head and why they are this way today like why they make this kind of music um why they talk about certain things because other than just listening to it's a jam sometimes i'm actually interested to just be like like i'm in the gym or something when i'm in the gym it's like a focus yeah. zone i zone out of everything i can't i don't even remember to answer my phone or anything uh <laughs> i put it on vibrate and so that way it doesn't like dim my music when i get a call or something yeah. And so mm -hmm. I just zone out and I just listen to something. And then when I listen to something while working out, it's like you are um you're in another like dimension in a way. True. You know, you control your breathing and everything cuz obviously Rafiq, you know, gym, if you it's all about breathing. If you can't control your breathing, you can't really work out very well. Exactly. So, and something about music and breathing and like just focus, you know, lo-fi um all that stuff. So, lo-fi is great, yeah. Yeah, and lo-fi, I, I didn't even know that was a term for music. I didn't know lo-fi was a word. I just like, heard I of the was, music. Yeah, I always knew there was something on YouTube like lo-fi. Yeah, well. that little endless stream. Yeah, the anime yeah. person. Yeah, but I never knew that lo-fi was actual term that they use for it to describe that style. And I was like, oh, that's what it is. Mm -hmm. So, I guess yeah. Um, let's. What about drawing? I'm not gonna lie, I haven't really done much drawing recently. Hmm. Well, how do you <laughs> feel about it <clears throat> in terms of it as an art form? I think, you know, I feel just like with the rest of the ones we, we just talked, I think it's still, it, it has its place, you know? Mm -hmm. And um, as you mentioned, painting to start it, but you can't really. Sometimes you draw first and then paint. That's what I did. Yeah, yeah, that's what I do. Class. Um, I drew and then I painted. Um, so, yeah, I think it fits in there with the other ones that we were talking about. Mm -hmm. Even mm -hmm. though I don't do it much, but I still respect the art form. Yeah, same yeah. here. I feel like uh, drawing is like the blueprint to like everything else, or at least when it comes to painting, pen and ink the acrylics, oils, like things like that. I feel like drawing is like the blueprint. It's like the brainstorm for the art world. Like some, some people write and then some people draw when it comes to like brainstorming. Yeah. And I feel like that's what drawing 
kind of is like a you have an idea let me just draw this out real quick if it's you know something that you plan on painting or something like that you know let me draw it out real quick or um you know, you're sitting in class and you're just bored. You so you're like, you know yeah. what, I'm going to just sit here and I'm going to draw out my ideas, you know. It's like, you know, or maybe I want to make a, a plan for how I want to do this artwork. So let me just draw it out real quick and, you know, I'll fix up the hiccups later. You know, for me, drawing is just the brainstorm and it's the beginning oh, yeah, yeah. to what that to be beginning to whatever comes into fruition after that. It's true, because like even with graphic design, that's right, we had to like sketch out before. Yeah, initial sketches. We, we had to do that in architecture too. All those thumbnails. Yeah, all those thumbnails, man. Floor plans, it's crazy. Okay, so one that we're not as familiar with, sculpture. What do you guys think? of sculpture as an art form? Um, I definitely respect the craft because I didn't take that class, mm -hmm. but I took ceramics, mm -hmm. yeah. which I hear is kind of similar. You're sculpting something. You're creating a 3D object. Yeah, you're using your hands to create a 3D object. And that's pretty challenging. I'm not mm -hmm. going to lie. I'm not that great uh, with that. <laughs> the same. So I, I respect people that can make these sculptures and when I see like Michelangelo's David I'm like <laughs> you're like damn that's crazy uh, yeah. that James probably took longest I shit. know <laughs> yeah how did he man just the detail on all of his sculptures I'm just whoosh. I'm really excited to get yeah. taking my class next semester I might I might come down I might I might come down like in October I'll probably drive down in October just to see. Yeah, that'd be cool. Yeah. My friend said he has a place yeah. I could stay at, so I'm good. Um, Rafiq, what do you think yeah, about sculpture? Good. Sculpture has to be the most. Like, you have to have patience. It's almost like the fishing for art. You know, when you go fishing, you know, you're on a boat. And the fish may come, it may not come, but you wait there patiently just to feel a little bit of movement on uh, your fishing rod's line string, you know. And I feel like sculpture or ceramics, you know, I took ceramics and, uh, you know, I was good with ideas, but that drink was hard. Yeah, it's when hard it came. to execute, yeah. 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 <clears throat> so, like, sculpture is just, like, the patience. To just knock at, especially with stone, like just to knock at little bits and pieces to create this, you know, human anatomy or an animal. Yeah. Or, you know, even like a toilet or, you know, it's like just all the patience it takes <clears throat> to make this artwork. And if you mess up, then you might have to start over just to. Or you might, you have to adapt some way, somehow, make it to where nobody can see it but you, or nobody can notice it but you. And, you know, I really respect them for that. Like, it's, it's just high patience and creating something that, you know, the majority don't have the patience for. You know, because I ain't gonna lie, I ain't trying to sit there all day, you know, yeah. some stone, you know, I get bored too quick, so. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'll be like, you know, someone else could take this joint. You know, I'll put all, all the mapping of what I want, and y'all can do that. You know, but, but yeah, it's like I respect it, but it's a extreme amount of patience, extreme amount of focus. You know, you either in it. If you ain't in it, then it's not gonna come out good. Yeah, I feel. Okay. And the last one here that I have on the list, obviously there's more uh, different types. I just had these things off the top of my head. Uh, dance. What do you guys think? We have TV shows out there that are strictly for performing stuff, dance and stuff. You know, America's Best, America's Got Talent, Dancing with the Stars and all this stuff like that. And they all show it off as like an art form. So what do you guys think about dance? Oh, dance is definitely an art form. Dance is... The second hand of music 
It's like yin yang. That's, That's what dance is to me. It's like yin yang. It's like because my boy David dance, and it's just the ultimate oh, yeah. feel of if you want to express your body ultimately, then dance. Mm-hmm. Like, that's how you, like, you go into a party and you keep bumping. That's how you see what a person's like when the crowd's around them, you know? Like, mm-hmm. you know, are they simple? <laughs> are they old man? Just do a little jig like? Are they, you know, spinning around, spinning on their head, you know, b-boying, crumping, rob- robot? You know, uh, what do they do, you know, when everybody's watching? You know, it's a kind of similar to martial arts, you know? I've, tell people, um, or at least before we spar and stuff like that, I'd be like, you know, put on a show. I tell them, put on a show. Or I ask them, you know, how far would they go, you know, to get this win? You know, because when you're fighting someone, you know, it's survival. It's a different mindset. But for dance, it's like time to put on a show. Or this is survival, you know. You see the dance battles, like the lay twins and stuff like that. You know, I'm here to show you that you can't do what I can do. I'm here to show you that I can do what you can do <laughs> better than you. You know, yeah. that, that's dance. Like, you ain't going to come out here saying that you beat me. You know, you can hit this, you can hit that, but I'll hit the same things, but even better, you know. So dance is just free form expression. Like, let me show you something without words. Yeah. If you had no exactly. words, then you would have to dance. Yeah. Just be yeah, free. I think it's like an extension of music, you know? Yeah. Like the music hits and then you just start moving. Yeah. I remember, like, going to uh, downtown and you went to, like, a, a super white club. I don't want to sound racist in this. Let me stop. <laughs> a super uh one-sided club <laughs> and um and we were we went there a group of us you know we're we're all different aspects of life and everything um we have a friend who like says he just cannot dance at all he just does not know how to even start moving and i'm like in my mind i was like no nah, that that means you're just you're thinking too too hard mm-hmm. you're overthinking it you say you can't dance. Like I personally think I I can't really dance well, but I can dance, just not well. Um, you're thinking too hard. You're thinking what other people are gonna think about what you're doing. But the good dancers out there, those people literally don't care what people are gonna say or look at. They they just, they just do it. However their body moves, they just do it. You know. And mm-hmm. and you know and they that's how they express themselves. They just they just move however it is. Graphic design is the same way. If you think too hard about how other, someone's going to think about your work, you're never going to do it. And then you're yeah. well, that's it. Same for writing, same for everything. Um, yeah. And with that, so I was I was while you guys were talking, I was looking into um, this website I never heard of until now, debate.org. Um, and there it literally is. So there's a thing you Amari, I know you said. Um, where is it? You said sports are considered a form of art. So there's a debate here. Uh, between two sides it's just anyone can add input into it um mm-hmm. i'll just read the first paragraph on each one the first uh thing on each one this one person says sports are a form of art art is defined as an ex- the expression or ap- application of human creative skill and imagination producing work to be appreciated primarily for their beauty or emotional so take that word, take that line right there, and just think about it. Um, and baseball, for example, is the sport that involves skills, creativity, and imagination, and it prov- it produces works work or matches that are generally that are greatly appreciated for their competitive nature and teamwork spirit. Therefore, it is a form of art. Thus, sports are art forms. The no side said. Um, art is about creativity and the idea that nothing can tell you where to go or what to do. Uh, your imagination is the only thing that limits you. Sports are about abiding by a set of strict rules. Any deviation from these uh, make the game unenjoyable for everyone. There's no creativity involved at all. It's just physical activity. Um, <laughs> I I can see what they say on each side, but I can also disagree uh, with some of them on each side. Yeah. Especially with the no person. Yeah. I mean, I don't know what the no person was saying. Exactly, because within the game, things happen. Mm-hmm. Different things happen. A lot of different things yeah. happen. Mm-hmm. 
Because you can go skyline. Yeah. How do you, how you shoot the ball? If it's a ball, for instance, how you shoot the ball? Like, is there any sport that doesn't re- doesn't require a ball? The moves you make to uh, get to where you need to go. Yeah. It's just. And however you move, you know, however you cross over someone, whether it's soccer, uh, basketball, whatever it is. Right yeah, just anything. Yeah. How you express. Otherwise, you could just dribble, for instance, with basketball. You could just dribble straight to the hoop, not do anything interesting. Exactly. But no, you're it showing off. Creative. Yeah. Exactly. If it wasn't creative, there would be no Kyrie. Mm-hmm. Like, Michael Jordan yeah. would not have a career with that infamous exactly. Jordan logo. Like, there's rules, but rules are meant to be broken. Mm-hmm. Like, look at LeBron James. LeBron James changed the whole perspective of the game. LeBron James left Cleveland, went to Miami, won championships, went back to Cleveland, won a championship. Now he's on the Lakers. Yeah. You know, when LeBron James moved to Miami, league, leaguers at first criticized him. But then they were like, oh, hold up. He's making rings. Oh, hold up. He has some of that team himself. And then you got a KD. Hopped over to uh, the Golden State. Then you got DeMarcus Cousins. Hopped over to Golden State. Then LeBron moved to the Lakers. Now everybody was like, everybody was saying, oh, nobody want to play with LeBron. But then you got Rondo, Lance Stevenson, you know, like goons coming to play with LeBron. And then now you got teams like OKC, like forming different things, probably about to get a uh, Schroeder trading out uh, Carmelo because, you know, Carmelo just need to retire. But because yeah. uh, <laughs> uh, he ain't good no more. But uh, and then the Spurs <laughs> trading Kawhi Leonard for Demar Derozan. You know teams are shaping up to face, you know, a big monster in the Golden State Warriors. You know that's a skill in itself. Like that's an art in itself, knowing where to go and who you work well with. You know people pe- criticize PG for staying with Russell Westbrook, but maybe PG said, you know, I feel like I'll work better with Russell Westbrook. You know it's like yeah. it's all a. It's 90% mind, 10% physical. Mm-hmm. And what your mind can conceive, the body shall achieve. You just work at it. Mm-hmm. And that's what these uh, athletes do, you know, NFL players, running backs. You think it's easy to see through the hole? <laughs> if you can't see through the hole, you're getting cracked. Mm-hmm. Or you ain't yeah. going past that line. You know, a wide receiver, if you don't catch that ball the right way, you're out. You're going to be out for the season because the DB is going to come and try to take your head off. You know, it's like, then DBs, like safeties. Uh, You got to literally see the whole field with people in front of you. That's not easy to do. That's a, that's an art. That's a skill. That's something you train your eyes over your body. You know, you got to train every aspect just to be, just to want to try to even get noticed. And then you just work to be, you know, one of the greatest ever or the greatest ever for the present era. Hmm. Yeah. Amari, you have anything? Oh, yeah, I think, yeah. I answered it now. Did I? I don't know. You said in the beginning. Yeah, it's been an hour. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> let, me see, let me make sure how much, how long you've been recording. Oh, it's just an hour. Okay. So we got, we got a little bit of time left. Um. Yeah, so I'm going to read this other thing that I read while you guys were speaking. Um, It says, uh, sports are a physical activity. Unless it's something mainly used for artistic purposes, such as dancing, then it's just a sport. I made an argument, uh, but I'm going to skip all that. Um, Well, they are, but sports aren't one of them. Basically, almost everything can be an art, is what he was saying before. Sports aren't one of them. If we start classifying football as art, then what else will be classified as something totally wrong? Painting as a sport? That sounds interesting, actually. Uh, jogging as a hobby, skim milk as a dirt. sport? Like fast painting? Do they have that as a thing? I don't know. Look that it sounds up. really interesting, actually. Wait, what is uh, it? Painting as a sport. Hmm. That sounds really interesting. And this other guy was saying sports are not art. Art is a limitless ex- uh, creative expression of our life experiences. Sports have rules and an ultimate goal, such as achieving a particular outcome or outdoing your opponent. Sports are competitive, whereas art is reflective. Uh, art is also more subjective and open to interpretation. Um, it's personal, and we take many forms. It also does not require physical prowess. Uh, uh, I'm kind of weak because, uh, well, technically it does take physical prowess. Yeah, I mean, it does. You know, a pencil ain't just gonna, yeah. you know, draw 
draw. You ain't gonna look at a pencil and it's gonna get up. Yeah. But uh, I keep thinking this week that they keep mentioning rules for these sports because, you know, when we sit in these classes, they they talking about rules. Yeah. You gotta do it this way. You can't put you this type of paint with this one, otherwise it'll crack. Exactly. But people do it anyway yeah, for the design. And when you do it like that, though, and it comes out good, they're like, oh. Maybe we should change that. Oh, then, uh, yeah. oh you broke the rules. <clears throat> but it looks good, so, you know, keep doing what you do. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> That's why I'm like, I was reading it as you guys were speaking, and I was like, I can see where he's talking about, or he or she is talking about. But I can also disagree. Actually, it was a she. It was a Danielle. I can see where she's talking about. At the same time, I'm like, mm, you know. Okay, so this is another one. Um, it's gonna be one of the final topics. Um, do you consider everyone an artist? Everyone is gifted with the type of art style. This guy says yes, and another person says if they have made art, then they're an artist. If they didn't, then they're not. Doesn't matter if somebody's extremely skilled is, is extremely skilled at the art. They just have to make art to be an artist. It can be visual, musical, expressive, whatever. I don't exactly think, though, that every single person in existence has made an artwork, a work of art before, uh, be it a doodle or something else. If everyone refers to every human being on the planet as as artists, then newborns and extremely poor, sick people are in, included in everyone. Uh, and I'd be surprised if all of them have created an artwork before. The prompt isn't asking if everyone is artistic uh, or has the potential to be an artist. It's asking if everyone is an artist. And in my opinion, that's not the case. That's what this random person said. I mean, I think everyone is. I'm pretty sure. Like, everyone, yeah. I feel Even like if they, they don't pursue it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I yeah. feel like, I guess it depends on the perception. For me, everyone's an artist just because, in my view, art is just yourself. I mean, you come out as a living art. And then you yeah. literally just start expressing yourself in different, different ways, and that's how you form, you know, formulate, you know, your personality. Then you formulate, you know, how you walk, how you talk, how you do different things, how you approach different things. You know, are you analytical? Are you just heads in? Are you a bit of balance in the in between kind of orientation? You know, you look at babies, and I believe I talked to Mario about this one time where I was at a basketball game. With AC and this uh, chick, and you know she was talking about how it was smart that they brought a baby to the basketball court. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, because uh, babies make people smile. And I was like, well, it's not. I don't feel like it's necessarily the baby that's making people smile because I make myself smile every day because I'm, you know, Rafik D. Barnes. But um, I feel like the baby makes someone people smile because too many people are afraid to be themselves. And I feel like that's when they lose the art. The baby literally self-expresses. The baby is art. You know, a baby does not fear what people think around it. Yeah, it doesn't care. It do what it wants to yeah. do. And I feel like a lot of people are too afraid to do what they want to do. A lot of people want to work these nine to fives or work for somebody or get told what you want to do. And then people like us who are, aren't afraid to speak out and express ourselves, you know, you know, we're the odd kids, we're the conceited, we're the arrogant, whatever they want to call us. Mm-hmm. But then, they're, you know, paying for our products or paying to see what, what we say next. And I feel like everybody starts off as an artist, but the majority fall off from being an artist. Yeah, I know for a fact that our program at our school, um, a lot of people want to get into that because they're like, man, people said I can draw really well, I can paint really well, I can take pictures really well. And then... They're like, uh, maybe I can't do this as well as other people, so let me not. Yeah. You know, and in that way, it is a competition, which is just like, which is just like sports. It's it's competi- It can yeah. be a competition, and that's how I took it as I took every class as a competition. It's messed up as it is, <laughs> but. Uh, yeah. Let me see. Let me see. Everyone was gifted with an art style. Is what this guy is saying. No matter how young the person is or how old, no matter if someone has a disability or one is a criminal, uh, everyone uses art and each person has a unique art style that they are good and others are not. 
uh, artists and I know that art an artist is defined as a person skilled at a particular task or occupation because of this everyone is talented and skilled at something almost anything you can think of it can is considered art even if they do not they're not professional they are still artists at work uh, no matter what type of person or art style they do they're all considered artists I guess what we can pretty much agree on with art in general for the topic um, arts pretty much a way of expression it doesn't have to be original it doesn't have to be um yeah it pretty much doesn't have to be original it doesn't have to be even drawn down um you can just move and it can be that way so i'm like man the way you move is really beautiful and you could think that like man that's kind of weird thinking how i move is weird is beautiful um but you say the same thing to art any like yeah. go to a museum you say like man this looks really beautiful the way it flows so mm -hmm. technically your body can be art to me um the way you move again is an art form and with the way you move being an art form uh whether or not the purpose of the way you, what you're moving for is for people to think is an art form but um the way you move you know could be your signature just like michael jordan his has his jordan logo it's on every shoe that yeah. he made <laughs> and that signature movement style is literally became an art form in terms of shoes jump man yeah so even Mario, speaking of with that too, Jumpman Mario, like he, yeah. the way he jumps, that little one fist up in the air, that's another. Did I? I think he might have taken that. I think Michael Jordan might have taken that from Mario. I don't know which one came first, but they both jump the same way. Only Mario is just like a pudgy, pudgy pixel character. Yeah. So they actually, I don't know, whoever came first has that style first uh, with the two legs spread out and one arm, one hand in the air. Because they jump the same exact way. I just thought of it. But all of that can be an art form. Um, so what about any any final thoughts with uh, this topic of what is art? you have anything anything uh, insightful to say at all? Yeah. yeah. Oh, go ahead. I go ahead. Oh, you told me to go ahead? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Because... I probably like agree with a lot because I think we both are probably gonna say the same. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the insightful thing is, you know, people say the sky's the limit, but how can the sky be the limit when there's space? You know, the universe is endless, existence is endless, and art is endless. You are endless. So, uh, whatever you do, whether it's IT, the mixed martial arts, the graphic design. The pen and ink, the oil pastel, photography, film, architecture, clothing design, you know, whatever, interior design, whatever it may be. You know, you can't sit there and let people tell you that you won't be able to do it or you can't do this or can't do that or you can't do things. I mean, you can, but you shouldn't do things for the approval of others. You should do things to see you know, go beyond the boundary. Because, you know, you know, people talk about fear, but there's nothing to fear. You know, the only thing people are gonna do is either criticize or they're gonna take, or kill, you know, try to kill you. And at the end of the day, you know, it is what it is. I mean, you gotta do your thing. You gotta be who you are. Mm -hmm. And whether that makes you money or not, you know, it's up to you. I mean, I believe that you can make money in anything, make millions, billions, trillions in whatever you wanna do. It's a thing, a matter of, do you believe that? How are you gonna approach it? You know, you gotta, for these things, you gotta work hard. You know, people looking at it, they're like, oh, that's easy. You know, drawing, drawing's easy. It's like, oh, really? Well then, draw something. You know, people told me drawing's easy, so I'm like, oh, really, draw something for me. Well, design's easy, all right, design something for me. Express that, tell me what that is. Why'd you do it? You probably can't, because, <laughs> because, <laughs> First off, you don't even know how, most people don't know how to talk about themselves. Mm -hmm. So if you can't talk about yourself, then how are you gonna talk about this little artwork or this little, you know, what you're talking about, uh, where could the, the Mario, how are you gonna talk about Mario? Mm -hmm. Oh, are you gonna say, you know, I came up with this little fat dude. Oh, okay. What else? What's he do? Why is he gonna make you money? Why is he gonna be the biggest uh, Nintendo creation that has ever been made? Mm -hmm. Why is that? You know, how is it relevant? You know, a lot of people can't do that because a lot of people don't know how to explain themselves. You know, it's like 
everything just starts with us. And as art starts with you, you know, whatever you want to do, you got to go full ahead in. There ain't no backing out. There's no plan C's, D's, to Z. There ain't none of that. It's a plan A. You know, people are like, you know, I got a plan B, plan C. That means you don't believe in the plan A. And the plan A could be whatever you want to do. Film, design, um, clothing, any of that. All together. They can be all together. Whatever comes first comes first, you know. Mm -hmm. You can do it all. So why not do it all? You're limitless. It's like Russell Westbrook. Why not? King James. What's it called? What does he say? King James, greatness of weight or something like that? Yeah, yeah. something about, oh, strive for greatness. Mm -hmm. That's what he says. Yeah, that's you know? You can be the greatest ever. And nobody can tell you not. Yeah. The greatest ever because, well, nobody's you. Yeah, I agree with that. <laughs> yeah. You know, this topic, this was very good. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for having Yeah, this was good. Yeah. Do you have anything to take away from that, Omari? That was it, man. It's like, I agree. I'm like, you know, just uh, believe in yourself, really. At the end of the day, create. Yeah. Um, and uh, put it out there and just, you know, love what you do. Mm hmm. Yeah. Cool, cool. All right. And to finish up, um, where can people find you two at? Social media wise, obviously. All right. Yeah, you can uh, find me on Instagram, Omari McKinney, just O-M-A-R-I-M-C, and then you should see the rest. And I'll keep and it in the, the description as well. What about you, Rafiq? Okay. Man, you can find me on Instagram and Twitter at Barnes D. Rafiq, B-A-R-N-E-S-D-R-A-F-I-Q. And then you can also find me on Snapchat, that's U K K U dot i i on snapchat okay and the final thing um you guys working on anything that you want the world to hear about anything they huh. want to stay tuned for <laughs> of course <laughs> always working boy <laughs> any special Whatever. project <laughs> working on a music project um it's called it's gonna be called i'll give y'all the name it's gonna be called uh toma space Mm -hmm. um, it's okay. going to be probably a year project right now because it's going to have like a whole bunch of songs because I don't want to come out with an EP or an album. I want to do something grander for my first music project. Okay. So I'm going to call it a book or actually a fable. Mm -hmm. Yeah, maybe a fable. I'm going to call it a fable, something different, you know, because it's going to have like 40, 50 <laughs> songs on there. Oh, that's a lot. But it's going to have spoken words, singing, uh, hip hop, rap, beat. Just playing like all that, you know. Um, Amari gonna be a part of the project. Uh, my boy Rashad, uh, David. Yeah. Oh yeah, Quaker, if you want to get into it too. Sure. Um, oh yeah, mate. Yeah, definitely might have to need you for like photography and film, or if you have any ideas. Okay. Um, but uh, doing that and then working on this other art project, uh, pen and ink, um, drawing people. Uh, drawing people's faces or the people that I know, um, and then putting their spirit animal with them. Okay. Okay. Um, so it'll be like half your face, half spirit animal, and then like things in the background, most likely. Uh, oh yeah, I probably need y'all's faces actually. Okay. But uh, yeah. Cool. Those are the two main that I'm working on. Oh, and I'm just working on martial arts. You know, I'm about to face McGregor in Ireland <laughs> in the next two years, 2020. <laughs> 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 he's waiting for you then he's waiting for you he'll be like oh, I see you <laughs> oh my um, yeah so for me right now I'm at the like, beginning stages I'm trying to think of a new photography series to have because okay. right now I'm just kind of on my Instagram I've been posting randomly just kind of yeah. images and photographs I think look good so I'm going to post but I want to start at least, maybe like Start small with like 10, a 10 set series, but they all go together. So maybe like one a week. Um, but you'll notice kind of like it's going to be a progression, maybe tell like a story through the photos or something, or a hidden story that you might have to catch. Make it not so, you know, in your face, but more subtle. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I'm still at the very beginning stages of thinking like maybe what I want this series to be. Okay. Okay. 
And with this podcast comes close to an end, uh, you can find uh, The Art of Thought on pretty much where all better podcasts are found at. Stitcher Radio, um, iTunes coming soon, probably by the end of this week. You can find it on Google Play Music. You can find it on TuneIn Radio, so you can use your Amazon Alexa and you know, tell her to play it, and it'll just play it. Um, you can also find me, uh, Quaku, at on Instagram, at that guy Quay, K-W-E, all together. Um, but yeah, that was episode two of the Art of Thought podcast. Uh, it'll be uploaded shortly. So if anyone's listening to this, you can, um, yeah, you should probably see, obviously you'll see it now, you know, because you're listening to it. But yeah, that was it. We will catch you guys later. All right, see y'all. Yep, peace.